applaud your honesty just mid-sentence to just be like, I have no idea what I'm saying. I was in the boys' story, I was like, this sounds right, but there's something specific I'm missing to make it all make sense. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I, Wardy, I live my life like that, honestly. Like, I, I'm, I'm saying stuff, I don't know what's coming out, it just happens. But, uh, yeah. All right, spawning over the bottom left-hand side. As our blue Protoss today, it is Rodzin. In the top right-hand corner, our red Terran player is going to be Nikorak. I would not actually like to pick a favorite between these two. I think they're both on that kind of similar level. I think they're both very capable of winning here. Um, Nikorak to see in more online events, but when I do see Rodzin, he honestly performs like up to kind of a similar level. So, yeah, this one is uh, has not really got any... Uh, Anything to be added from my side, I guess. No, I like both these players fairly solid, eh? Like they've been around yeah. for a while as well. I, I feel like Nicaract from memory is uh, maybe a bit younger, but de uh, this is going to be a close one. Like they're both evenly matched in my head. Rodzin is kind of knocked about like the 6k ish mark on Europe in the past. I don't know what he is currently in Nicaract. He's not going to be far off. Like these are the kind of guys that when I load up ladder. And I, I run into one of them. I'm like, oh no, god damn it! Like, I'm just gonna get pooped on. Like, <laughs> like they're they're sitting in that range where they're they are actually very very solid. Uh, and and it would be a shame for either one of them to fall out zero two here. But this should be a nice match. Yep. No, I'm actually really looking forward to this. Like I say, I don't really have a favorite to pick. Um, just excited to see what these guys are gonna show us. Potential to see these guys play. Like, I mean, this is it for them. You know, this is one of them has a chance of getting another shot. In Swiss round four. So you know they're going to play their hearts out. You know they've had a rough time getting here. This is their opportunity. This is their best and final shot. They're going to play their hearts out. And I think that can really just bring out the best in StarCraft here, right? If you put two players who are evenly matched up against each other and you just say, go at it, like you get some really good games sometimes. It doesn't have to be like absolutely pristine. The macro doesn't have to be perfect because if they're both making the similar amount of mistakes or so, it's still extremely entertaining. That gets me very excited about this. So can turn into very scrappy SE2. I think that's what we live for sometimes. Definitely is. CC will be happening. Look at the... All right, all right. So he's got it uh, in a nice location there to float over. It's been such a long day, Wardy. For a second there, I was like, what map are we on? Like, uh, I, I was like, the natural is below, but obviously uh, it's, it's been a long day. It's going to be a lot of Reapers with... So it's going to be like three Reapers and two Hellion follow-up here. Like, it's a very aggressive build from Nicorac, and this can spell trouble for you very quickly. This is a build that was done quite a long time ago. Like it was, it was very TVT esque. Then it got tried out in TVP, and it was like, hey, this can actually deal a lot of damage. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I I, I like this one. It's a bit of pressure early. You're going to get the Wooden Mind Drop coming after. Just lets you kind of be the aggressor, and you know sometimes you can cause so much trouble out of this as well. So. You see those Reapers and the Hellions heading down to the bottom left-hand side. As we head down, down over there. Yeah, and I mean, this is a pretty big entrance in here. And he's actually going to go for the Adept yeah, I like first, it. just to mitigate... Yeah, mitigating the damage. He's, he's going to get the Stalker. Stalker. Oh my god, the, the Hellion microed back with the Reaper grenade. At this point, do we really chase the Stalker? <gasps> do, do we not turn onto the probes? Oh my oh goodness. My god, he gets this the Stalker is... as well. Jeez. And th th this is an invite into the main, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Well... We talked about this build being wow. able to get damage done. I, I didn't think it was going to get this done. No, this, this is brutal. Savage. Savage, brutal. We could pick a whole bunch of other words. Get the Thesaurus out because this is not pretty. We got the Hellion to get one more shot off. The Reapers will hunt for a final kill or two. We target fire correctly there. We get one more probe. We do to make it 13. My goodness. That went about as bad as it could if you're rods in like yeah. this. There's Absolutely. There's advantage. Yeah, there's advantages to having like two of your big buildings at the front. If you're a Protoss, just so you can get a wall in, and then for the for the Terran player, it's like, all right, do I use a grenade to pop that unit out the wall and make my life a little bit easier on entry? But he didn't even have to do that. Got to use all his grenades very nicely, and now Rodson is just fighting the game from incredibly far behind. Uh, like that work account does not lie. Protoss want to be a good ten ahead or so at this kind of stage, and. He's a good five or so behind. This is just not what you want at all. Nicorac is going to have fun this game. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a lot of fun. He's going to drop Widow Mines in as well. So this is more mining time lost. You're already in a horrible position. 
The last thing you want is to be losing even more time Ooh. from mining as the medevac, though, is going to get shot down. So, hey, Rodson gets a catch. He will uh, set off the wooden mine. So, hey, that was as good as it could have gone because the other wooden mine never got a chance to fire. And he gets the medevac before the natural probes have to evacuate as well. Now, Nicaract will send the raven across the map as he just drops a little scan in. This is one of those moments where you're like, surely if I just build up to, like, stim and combat shields, my first push should be pretty freaking deadly, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if, if I'm in Nicarak shoes here uh, and it's gone that well for me, I just do some pretty sharp two base timing, play absolutely standard, you know, third CC behind it, most likely. Don't complicate things. Um, but he's coming out to deal more damage with this Raven and a bit of a slow pull there. We'll get two probes, some lost mining time. Everything just hurts if you're in Rod's in shoes, man. Like, he, he's going to have to try and gear up for so much here. Yep, absolutely has. Plus one stim and combat shield all come through on the side of Nicarax, so you will get those going, but uh, I mean, even just trying to blink on the other side, it's like you show up, you, you fire a couple of shots. We're going to try and get charged. We're going to try and get the Nexus. I just cannot imagine a world we get enough gateways and enough units out in time to realistically hold off the bio push. Like, I mean, you just took so much damage early on. It wasn't just the probes killed. You were not mining with any of the other probes during that time. You lost a bunch of units, so it's not even like you had a strong army on the back of this. When you said that this was as badly as it could go, it really was. I mean, in every way, shape, and form. If this wasn't such an important match, he'd be out of here. Oh, yeah, you, absolutely. You can guarantee that. Like, you can guarantee it. It's, it's that bad. And now Rod's in. He's trying to get a bit of everything, isn't he? He's got Blink already done. He's getting charge out. And, I mean, four Sorkers can one-shot these Marines. But you see that army, you're like... This is that gulp moment, because, I mean, it's not as if Rodson has an army back at home. I just checked the unit tab. It's He's got six stalkers in total. That, that, that's it. One century, one zealot. And, you know, he, he just lost their 15% of his army. <laughs> like, it's, that's a lot of Terran coming, and that's a lot of big upgrades finishing. Wait a minute. Stim is super late, though. Did he just accidentally cancel it? I swear he had it on the way already. I, I thought so as well. I mean... I, I don't think it's going to matter, luckily, but... Big yeah. shield, battery overcharge, li living for as long as possible. These are the worst Marines you've seen in a while. Like, <laughs> 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 What a game. What a game. Okay, okay. I mean, if he had Sim there, that would have been a lot better. <laughs> um, I'm going to watch back on the, the, the stream and see if that uh, does anything. Now we're going to lose a Raven as well. I mean, hey... Nicarak's giving Rods in all the hope in the world. Like, if this is the strategy to give him some hope and then break him down, then that's just cruel, bro. Just finish him off already, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That that was that was so strange. This is this is all bizarre. Like this <laughs> Overall, like 90 90 odd percent of it is just like good play, and then one or two things are just like, huh? He like, what's happening? He definitely started Stim, by the way, so he must have cancelled it or lifted a barracks or something. Uh, yeah, I think something like that would have happened. Like, they have changed it where if you lift a barracks now, it doesn't... Like, you can't lift it if an upgrade's going, which I think oh, was really? a nice change for, for Blonkers like me, yeah. That was, that was done quite some time ago. I stopped making um, that mistake a long time ago, naturally. Naturally, naturally of course, yeah. Wardy, of course. <laughs> uh, a, a player of your caliber, you know. <laughs> you know it, you know it. All right, well, let's see how our uh, bio going to stem to the front here. Fusel's going to charge forwards. It's going to be seeing the Widow Mines. Oh. <laughs> <Good play. laughs> the Unbarrow split on the Widow Mines is not something you see every day. With Stim, we're going to fight in. We're going to start looking a whole lot better. We are going to just go jump it in. The Disruptor dies. One Colossus is basically going to try and save Ooh. the day because Colossus 2 spawns into this. And, uh, yeah, this does not look pretty. Man, that's forgetting Stim. Or not forgetting Stim because you're absolutely right. He was upgrading it. It was, you know, 80% done. Then it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> but yeah, Rod's in. He's, he's been fighting this game from so incredibly far behind. The fact that he's turned this into something-ish is massively thankful to that sim cancel. But, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's one of those games where, like, we know it's kind of over. We will obviously watch until Rod's in taps out. But it, so much has to go. Like, Nigarak cancelled his stim, and it's still pretty much fine. You know, like, he's still easily ahead. <laughs> like, that's a pretty big disaster that just hasn't really mattered. To, like, obviously, has had some impact, but he's still very far ahead. He has to make a lot more hugely critical errors at this point if he wants to uh, 
realistically kind of lose this game. But hey, you know what? We've seen some crazy games. I thought Goblin was super dead earlier today, and he survived, so I'll believe for a bit. And against Clem as well, of all people. Like, it was uh, pretty incredible. I, I'm, I'm really happy for Goblin that he got to play a really good game one. Um, and, and honestly, it was one of those games that he could have potentially had uh, several times. Like, I, I don't think he was uh, throwing at all. I just think it was a good back and forth where there wasn't uh, a, sh a sheer outclassing and doing that with Clem, that's phenomenal. Yeah. All righty, Nicorac moving to the south of the map here, and he does want to get out with those medevacs to somewhere. <laughs> His supply is monstrous at this point. Giga long distance mining. You go long distance man. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, I, I mean, he's just in a terrible spot. I mean, I, I, not really much else to summarize on, but we kind of talked it over. Maybe the world you, you kind of win this is if you get the most magnificent disruptor shots. We stim down here. There is not, in fact, a base. Force fields, disruptors, those are your kind of comeback mechanics right now. You are down on upgrades currently. The few Vikings get caught a little bit, so you correct. I'm a little bit of a struggle there as the Colossi again just put enough of a threat out for the moment. Rodzin's a warrior, man. He, he's been so dead for so long, and there's really not much else to say, is it? He's, he's been fighting from such a deficit here, and to his credit, like he's, he's got plus one now on the go, but everything, you look at everything that's lining up here for both these players, and it's just, it doesn't spell anything but disaster for Rodzin. Um, Every fight is potentially going to get worse and worse before it gets better. Try and take a fourth base here against a Terran that's already on fourth base. It's meant to be the opposite way around. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, absolutely right. We're just going to see the Terran deny the fourth again. The disruptors are in dangerous position there. We're going to get one of them. The other one just lives off the back of the EMP. Again, you can deny the fourth. We're splitting the Terran army up. There's not enough Protoss to realistically split against two fronts here. We blink in, which isn't pretty either. As the Vikings get rid of the Colossus. We're running lower and lower on splash damage. I'm afraid that these disruptors are just going to get target fired down. If they fire, that's exactly what goes on. The Vikings will get rid of the Colossus. The Super Battery actually will save it for a moment. We're going to lift up and drop the main. And at the same time, Nicorak hits the left-hand side. And a run in here, depower the Robo Facility, stop future tech from coming online. And this should be the killing blow. There's the attack still in the main base as well, remember? So that's trading out with some Stalkers. Looks like the Medivacs went down, but... Marauders trade pretty well. Reinforcements stim into the third. I mean, come on. At some point, the man's going to run out of units. No, he gets rid of the Disruptor. That could have maybe been the chance as Rodzin does finally have to type GG. Nicorakt is going to win this game after. It was kind of done from the four-minute marker, but like we said, Rodzin <laughs> made it a game. He, he, he did, he did. And i, I got to say, Nicorakt, um a lot of those fights he microed very well. Like, we both went, oh, are those Widow Mines getting unburrowed and splitting in both directions? It was cool. The grenades at the start with the Reaper and the Hellions as well were all nicely placed. Uh, a good game out of him, a good game. He, he never looked like he was in danger, and that's just nicely done, nicely done. Yeah, sometimes there's... Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you missed, you messed up on the stim, but if there's ever a game to mess up that badly, it's the one where you basically locked, down, locked it down anyway, right? So, lock it down. Mess up. Now your mistakes are the way for the next game as well. And uh, you still have the map win. Beautiful stuff as Rods and Nick Correct head into game number two here in a second. It's Ghost River that we are essentially ready to load into. So one of these, uh, we've talked about this about kind of the shorter map, but it only gets larger as you play because you expand away from base number four and so on. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what that means. We'll see if Nick Correct comes out with some aggression. Again, he is a player who can play quite an aggressive game. So definitely have that as a possibility just to kind of keep in mind in general that you might just be aggressive all out um so yeah we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes this game two starting up on ghost river pretty much in just a second we are loading on into this one ghost river tvp got to see a little bit of it in other matchups not so much in tvp thus far still think some of those rules apply you know about that sv coming over bunkering down on that third and things like that it's it's very obvious where protoss want to expand and now oh, we're gonna see what uh happens in this series spawning on top left hand side it is the blue terran it is nicorect taking on the red protoss in the upper right hand corner it is rodson Oh, 
It was a nice build from Nicorax, that game. That was like a, also a bit of a blast from the past, but you can really see, like, if you're confident with it, you can get a lot of damage done. Won't be that kind of build again out of him, as he is going for a gas first build this game. Yeah. Gas first, so... We'll have a little, still definitely have like the, the route to aggression a little bit. That gas comes in. The factory can be nice and quick here. I mean, well, we'll see what Rodson wants to do. Obviously, we never really got to see Rodson's overall plan because, yes, okay, he, he went to Blink, he went to Colossus, but so much of that has to be based on the fact of, hey, I had a crappy opening. So we never saw how aggressive he wanted to be or if he just wanted to sit back and macro in the first place. A lot of what he wanted to do was really dictated by the fact like, hey, I lost 13 probes. So I kind of lost the game already. So he just had to play the only way he felt like he could to get back in it, which was very light stalker pressure, tech up to some splash damage units and just hope and pray you survive, which he kind of did for a while. So yeah, he was really forced into his, you know, his hand was kind of forced from, you know, minute four onwards. It'll be cool to see what he does mm -hmm. when he's able to kind of choose freely his kind of choices, his tech, his whether he gets aggressive or not. Uh, obviously that is assuming he's not going to take a whole bunch of damage early again, which I'd be surprised if it happened twice, obviously. Yeah, twice in a row would be uh, very, very bad for him. He did go for a gas first barracks, so he is going to go for a reaper. Will mean a fairly fast factory as well with that. And a CC on the low ground. This is the bravest TVP opening we've seen all day. And it's a zealot first from Rodson as well. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the zealot's actually going to step forwards. Obviously, the zealot can get across the map quickly, but the reaper will meet it, so... You can just get some free shots off onto the Zealot, and that Zealot will basically just buy time for the Adept to come through, right? So it's just going to say, cool, Reaper, you come back over this way, you deal with me, and then I'm just going to get my Adept out behind this, and you're never going to get across the map to truly see what's going on. The Reaper's going to be forever busy back over on this side playing defense at the moment. Yeah, and if I look at what Nicorak's seen so far, I, this always makes me a little bit scared when I see a Zealot just coming, marching forward, and I haven't got to see if there is a natural going down. He's going to make the call that there is, but stopping that Zealot from slowing this down, does he get yeah. the CC done? I think it's just going to miss. Yeah, unfortunate indeed. But Hellion's on the go. Is it? Okay, it isn't a proxy starport, but this is again a build that you want to be very aggressive and deal a lot of eco damage against. Oh yeah, absolutely. As the uh, Reaper and the two Hellions are going to come through, the Adept will take a lot of shots. Adept will get away with the shade just in time, but it's going to be right there, so it's going to go down anyways. Uh, that Hellion wants to be a little bit careful. We're actually getting the two extra Hellions up as well, so we're really getting into like dangerous territory. Four Hellions across the map could absolutely start netting some damage similar to what we saw in game one. Yeah, this is, this is the kind of build where it's like, you use the Reaper, plonk out a unit if they're in the wall, and I mean, Rod's in. He, is he going up to, okay, three gates so far with a blink? This is definitely potential for being very aggressive but that reaper will come in handy with a build yeah, like this made. you want no a shield battery by the way wow <gasps> whoa he's just he's just fighting yeah no battery so you can actually just trade with this and oh that no. stalk is gonna go down hellions are gonna start hitting the probes and again there's only one stalker here now so it's gonna be difficult to shoot down the hellions in time i honestly feel like we could have ran into the main base because then you would have at least been away from this stalk and you know that's the only gateway that was ready to warp in because the others are on the front so then there would have been nothing in the main... Ah, but I guess the battery would have been there. Although, if you went in with three Hellions, he would have actually been able to shoot through the battery anyways, so... Yeah. Any which way, what, this is still great damage. I like everything from Nicorak this game. Like, I, I like everything from him. I, I think he's played really smart openers here. I also like the fact that he's going for Banshee and tanks. Like, this allows him to send a Banshee over to the top. Just be like, all right, I know, you're, I know exactly what you're doing now, because I've got all this scanning information. And it's just going to be more damage. Get the tanks back at home. He's going to sit very comfortably, not taking a greedy third either. If he just plops a bunker down at the front as well, I'd say it's a perfect response to what he's seen. And he's he's yep. waiting with that Banshee at the north as well. Or is he waiting? Okay, okay he's running he's, in a little bit. He's sending it. He just knows that he can already go. Looks about a finish, and uh, this is a, a very uh, harsh reality of... Just damage to be done, right? I mean, Banshee is going to try and escape to the side. The Observer was good enough, and he is going to see you up just to make sure he had vision as well. So, actually do clean up the first Banshee. Not too bad. Only three workers, but it is keeping Stalkers at home, right? Which means that more units get out and just more preparations can be made. We see no third base, and that should tell you that, hey, maybe I should just double down with a bunker at the front, because, like you say, that's the only thing he's really missing, right? 
Yeah, that was the one thing that was missing. It, kind of funny that he scanned there now. when his Banshee was going... It, it's funny that he scanned there when he was going to be there with his Banshee in, yeah. like, two seconds. <laughs> and he saw the shield battery here earlier, but it's like, all right, there's, the Observer wants to get across the map as well. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that are just not going well for Rodson. Uh, really aren't. And this game, there's a bunker also in the main... Right? Yeah. He, he, he definitely is scared about a warping of some sort. Robot base starts for Rodson here, and he, he's, he's kind of crippled economically, um, or at least not where he wants to be. A very, very late third base. Yep. Third is, uh, I mean, only just now going down. Six minutes 20 is one of the latest thirds you'll see as a Protoss who isn't just dead. Um, this Banshee comes back into the natural. Even just a couple of shots, a couple of probes, right? I mean, gets in, gets one. It's a pro pull as well. Mining time lost. Nikorak's army supply is looking good. With Stimpak Combat Shield and plus one, if he sends it, he might just win out because you kind of look at Rod's inside the map and you're like, well, he's not... I mean, he might have one Colossus, but there's going to be tanks that can take position as well. He salvages that bunker in the main base too, so he just gets rid of that. Now we're going to unseat your tanks. We're going to start moving. I think Nick Rack is very aware of the lead that he has. He's very aware he can send this a little bit right now. Yeah, and Rodson, he has to slow this down in any way that he can. But, yeah, I mean, he's got that warp prism still in the southwest part of the map. He's going to deal a little bit of tickle damage to this medevac. In fact, gets a good few volleys off on it, making it very low. But that Colossus, <laughs> it's got a massive job on its hands, doesn't it? And this time, Stim is not cancelled for Nick Rack as Mapu does point out. And that third base, oh, it's basically got a welcome, welcome Nicarak sign on it at this point. Yep. <laughs> welcome home. This one is yours already as uh, it gets cancelled up. Rods and actually supply blocked on the back of this just in case losing the third base alone wasn't going to be bad enough. We stim in. No respect for this Colossus. There shouldn't be to be fair because there's nothing. There's no battery here to fall back to on the natural. And we can just hit the Robo facility. I don't think we have to pull back with these bio units. Get rid of that Robo. The Colossus is probably the only good thing that can come out of this right now. And yeah, Stalker's getting targeted by, by tanks. And Fire will trade against the Zealots. This is good enough to send Nicarag to with a 2-0. Gonna break our streak of 2-1 victories. And uh, it was a pretty darn fast series as well. Nicarag just got ahead early both times. And uh, while game one dragged on a little bit, he had no intentions of letting game two drag on at all. Thank <music> you.